Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've listened to my colleagues and their contribution. First of all, honorable members, I want us to think about the economic benefits of the cathedral. Please, I happen the the Europeans, the Europeans are making money. Please, when he was talking, nobody shouted. Please. You see, we are all learning. When you go to Europe, most of the Catholic churches are giving money to their various cities. I happen to be in France with Honorable Esla, Strasbourg. The only two, when you go to Strasbourg, you will get a European Parliament. Apart from European Parliament, the only activities you see is around the Basilica, where they sell postcards, restaurants, tourists go there and spend money. When you go to Spain, Barcelona, Barcelona, if you take the airport, the second highest income Barcelona earns is from the Catholic Church called Sagrada Familia. Sagrada Familia. And look, I have been there three consecutive times, attempted to enter in Basilica and I did not get a chance. But even when I did not get a chance to enter, I spent about 89 euros buying postcards, whatever, over there. And my kids, also went to the restaurant so let us don't let us think of only the amount that we are going to spend but the long-term effect long-term effect look when we go to a uh, bedroom the first place they take you to is the catholic church that they spent 100 years to build the catholic church okay so the impact of what i'm saying is that we should look at the economic benefit too. My colleague was talking and the way he was arguing, as if this is a crime. The long-term effect is not a crime at all. The amount involved here, if we promote tourism, the amount we have here, 383 million dollars. If we promote tourism properly in this country, within five years, we will recoup this money. So, members, I know the situation we are in, things are tough, no doubt about it. But let us also think of the economic benefits. Because if we take decisions short run, short run, short run, without long term effects, we will not get anywhere. That is my argument. When you go to Hamburg, Hamburg, you visit the Catholic Church, you will pay. You go to Cologne, you will pay. Even Cote d'Ivoire here, of February, what he built over there. So let us think of the long-term effect, the benefits we are going to get out of this. And please, kindly don't let us be short-sighted. And million, and you think it's too big. In the next five years, 380 million, what you recoup from this Catholic Church, or Basilica, or whatever you call it, trust me, it will help this country and it will promote tourism in Ghana. So let us think along those lines where we're going to make money and not only look at the amount here and say that is a crime. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Now let me start by putting it on record. That as an elder of a church and as a and Bible as a believing, Bible -believing we on this side are not against the building of a cathedral. However, Mr. Speaker, because we are Christians, we are not playing to the gallery. We are following the dictates of the Bible. And this is what the Bible we believe in says to us. In Luke 14, 28 to 30, is there anyone here 
planning to build a new house, in this case a cathedral, who doesn't first sit down to, to figure out the cost, so, so you know, know if you can complete it? If, if you only, only get the foundation laid, and this is because the Bible is so telling, the Bible in Ghana will have a president called Akufuadu. This is what he says. If you only get the foundation laid, and then run out of money, you are going, you are to, going to look pretty foolish. Pretty foolish. Everyone, Everyone passing by, who took fun at you, he started something he couldn't finish. This is the word of the Lord. Don't you look foolish because you have only laid a foundation and run out of money. This is not some God, this is the Bible. You don't go to church. You don't go to church. The Bible will be saddled with a president who will not have made the cost of a cathedral. Mr. Speaker, he has run out of money. People are walking by that place and poking fun at us and say, look at them, they are foolish. Not us, you. And you sit here today and you tell me that unless we build the cathedral, we will not have God's blessings. Are you not the same people who say that we have been blessed by not having, by not having a civil war? Did we have a cathedral for us to have a civil war? Look at the cathedrals that we have. I'm a member of the Prayer Chapel International. Our cathedral seats 14,000 people. We are building a 5,000 seater cathedral. This 14,000 will not attack the blessings of God. You find a country that will have a tower. That is blessing. The minister sits there. The minister for works and housing is in this house. We, we are told, we that the, the consultant got 34% of the value. The Minister for Works and Housing is here. He set what consultancy limits must be. He has set it at 16%. So, so you sat in cabinet and watched your colleague minister pay a consultant 34%. The ministry has set a standard and he has broken it 16.5 and he has paid 34 percent and you didn't advise him and you tell us that it is God and Mr. President they tell us that if we refuse it because the Himaya tried to build we are Samala and Tobias when they were building a temple you forgotten that there was an Ananias and Sapphira name of God to steal stealing in the name of God that is the scene of Ananias Honourable Member Honourable Member you have not laid evidence that anybody has told you. Stealing. I was making reference to the Nazi Safira, which I did earlier. And the Nazi Safira stole in the Bible. You said you are stealing in the name of God. Please. If you make reference to Safira, please. Properly reference it. Mr. Speaker, for, for, for the purposes of clarity, Ananias and Sapphira stole money for the church. And if today we are seeing the disparity of 114 million, that is not being accounted for properly. Mr. Speaker, if this, this is not Ananias and Sapphira, I don't know what it is. But Mr. Speaker, the most important thing for me here. Is for us to know Arab member, that we will have. Arab member, hold on. Yes. Honourable member has referred to me in his response, and I think it's only fair that uh, I correct him. I think that he's misleading the house. Yes. Um, yes. You made a point that I set uh, the standard for for consulting uh, work for architects, but. On this case, there is an exception to every rule. Yeah. Yeah. It would be entirely inaccurate to just say that without stating the exception. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, continue. When I said he set a standard of 16.5%. So, so when you say you gave exception, Mr. Speaker, I was expecting that because we, Eric Opoku told us we will all account before God on the judgment, I was expecting you to ask him to show you evidence of the exception that he gave in this case. <laughs> you are lying. But, what were you referring to me about Eric Opoku? That we will all account to God. Mr. Speaker, we will all account to God on judgment. And then what? 
and I was expecting that maybe you ask him for evidence of the of the exception that he said. Members, <laughs> please don't draw me into the argument. I have a totally different interpretation from what you're saying. That's but if I were standing here, I'll make, I'll a, make different a different argument. argument. Now, now I'm sitting I'm here quiet. Leave me out. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Like I'm both you smiling to have washed your hands. <laughs> and I'm happy about that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Speaker, our friends on the other side remind me of scripture again. Matthew 15, 8 to 9. Yes. Where the Bible says, this people, this people, this people. This people. Yes. Hello. Yes. Matthew 15, 8 to 9. The, the Bible, Bible says, these people, these people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, but their, te their teachings are merely human rules. The Bible knew we will have a majority like this. Mr. Speaker, I will end by going back into the Bible. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. The Bible, in the Bible, God calls only one man, a man after his own heart. And that man was David, a man after God's own heart. A man that the finance minister aspires to be like in vain. But you see, Mr. Speaker, even when David wanted to build a temple for God, a man, he called a man after his own heart. He said, you have blood on your hands. And for that sake, you cannot build me a temple. So he puts together the materials for the temple for his son. Mr. Speaker, I end by remembering the lost eight citizens who lost their lives in the 2020 elections. There is blood on their hand. Can we build a temple for God? Thank you very much. Right Hello, official po, official pa. Merry Christmas to you all. This year, Brunya, a man the brute. What am I talking about? This is the Tap Tap Send Brunya Achebia from Tap Tap Send to you. All you have to do is to send two hundred dollars or two hundred euros or two hundred pounds, and you stand an instant chance to win exciting prizes every Thursday to the end of the year. So what are you waiting for? Send the family members the money. Let them also celebrate Christmas. And by doing that, you also stand a chance of winning exciting prizes from Tap Tap Send. And oh. <laughs> The grand draw is on the 29th of December, where you stand a chance of winning air fryers, blenders, televisions, a lot of prizes, and oh, free air tickets. Five of them. Tap, tap, send. Send the people the money. It's easy, it's convenient, and it's reliable.